Okay, so GPU Boost 3. Yep. Uh, remember Kepler? Uh, he was a nice guy. Kepler was a great guy. That's yeah. where we introduced GPU Boost 1, right, I think? It feels like it was 100 it years ago. It feels like a long time ago. <laughs> and the general idea of GPU Boost is, I'll, I think I have a slide for this. Um, the general idea for GPU Boost is there's a frequency curve, right? And you're moving up and down between voltage and frequency and dynamically based on things like temperature and power and, and a whole bunch of stuff, we're going to pick exactly the instantaneous frequency peak. Okay, so if the temperature goes high or, the, or, the, um, or, or say the power spikes up, we move down the curve to manage our, our envelope. Okay? Okay. Now, um, another thing about GPU Boost 2 is it had a fixed frequency offset. Plus 50 or plus, plus 100, 50 plus, plus 100. Remember that little slider? I remember it well. Okay. And what that does is it moves the entire curve by the same amount. Yep. Now the problem is, somewhere out there is this theoretical max clock curve. So every GPU has a different curve. It's based on your silicon. And the idea would be if we could discover this to run at it, that would be perfect. Sure. But you know, obviously we can't discover it. But we know that this fixed offset is less good because effectively this shape of the curve is not linear. Okay. okay. So uh, what we're doing with GPU Boost 3 is we're going to recover some of this lost opportunity by allowing the frequency offset to be variable per voltage point. Okay, that's a big change. What it means is that users can effectively create their own voltage frequency curve per okay. GPU. Okay, but uh, really, again, to understand this best, we need to do a demo. Okay. I, I think it's worth noting that out of the box, the GTX 1080 behaves like GPU Boost 2.0. Yes. Right? In, in all, like, to all outward appearances, right? Yes. It's going to change its clock, it's not taking advantage out of the box, but unless you go into software and do something else, you're mm -hmm. not taking advantage of this per voltage uh, no. scaling You have to, as an end user, you have to do stuff to take advantage of this. Now, I, I don't want to quite say GPU Boost 2.0 and 3.0 are the same. In fact, there's a lot of things that have been improved. Right. Kind of back to uh, Jonah's comment about how we're uh, architecting and engineering. GPU Boost has some pretty substantial improvements over GPU Boost 2. Okay. So 3 is better than 2, but we don't want to go into the details because it's kind of a part of our secret sauce. So from okay. the... From the uh, what, what, are, what are the effects of it being better? Higher, higher clocks, clocks longer? Higher clocks longer. Higher clocks more often. Yeah, higher clocks more often. That's okay. the way to think about but it. But it's interesting because your your boost clock on 1080 is the same percentage higher as your boost clock on 980. Our boost clock on 1080. Oh, oh, you mean the ratio? Between yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that is a that is a, a kind of by design. Okay. Yeah, the the base and boost have very specific uh, characteristics. And by the way, just like on uh, Maxwell and Kepler, we're going to keep that ratio going forward for all uh, SKUs. Okay. So uh, not all SKUs for all time, but for all SKUs of Pascal, the uh, all the OC SKUs of 1080, for example, will have right. that same ratio of base and boost. Okay. And the reason we're doing that is to try to make it easy for end users to sort, right? Because you're going to see like 50 different variations of, right. if we could have different combinations of base and boost, you wouldn't know what to look at, right? So because yeah. all the base and boosts are at the same ratio, um, you, can, you can sort of look at one or the other number. All okay. right. So let's go to the demo. Let me pull it up here. Hold on one second, Alan. Uh, and we are going to pull up the benchmark and I'm going to pull up precision. Everything works. And yeah, let me get closed yeah, on yeah. this. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Uh huh. Close that maybe. Okay. And where's precision? So first of all, shout out to uh, our friends again at EVJ who have been coming in hot, working around the <laughs> clock. All I can say is, uh, Stephen, if you're watching, that's been an amazing effort. And um, honestly, I think you're going to delight gamers. So um, I am. So how do you want to do this exactly? Let's start here. Okay, I'm just going to walk through it. Okay. Hey Ryan. Yes, sir. I'm not getting other screens. You're not getting which other screens? Uh, I'm getting it, but it's, there we go. You got okay, it. Okay, you got that. It was okay. okay, we got it. So this is a, a new version of Precision that we've been working with. It implements GPU Boost three, and you can see it's been cleaned up a little bit. This is now going up to 2.5 gigahertz on the on the dial. So <laughs> it's it's ready for Maxwell, right? <laughs> And um, it's got the power target, temp target, and the GPU clock offset. So if you slide this GPU clock offset, you're kind of doing what you've ever done. It's just like GPU boost. You can slide it around, and you can hit apply, and all of a sudden you're going to be running faster. So let me go ahead and uh, turn on a benchmark here, and I'm going to just start up heaven. And it's, it's running on the other screen. Oh, you got the other screen. Very we nice. Can, we can get both. You can do both. We can do that. Damn. Damn, you're good. I know. All right, so I've got the, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know I'm I good. know. I know I'm really good. 
All right, so I, I added just uh, off the top uh, one, 122 megahertz. I just picked that number randomly, of course. And you can see in our real-time display here on the main uh, picture, right now we're running uh, heaven. Move your mouse over and highlight over this. I think it okay. might give you more, uh, a little bit bigger. Okay. Where's yeah. my mouse? Mouse. There we go. Mouse. Okay, there so right now it's running at 1987, kind of coming up and down. Yep. I've added 122 megahertz to the clock, and I'm sure I can go higher. Um, and you can see right now we're reporting things like uh, it's power limited, and um, we're running at 1.012 volts, right? So this is a very typical experience. The temperature right now is ramping up to 62. Our temperature target, you can see, is 83C. So right. it's going to get to 83, and then it's going to stabilize, right? And the fan will kick up. To and keep then the fan will kick up, and yeah. we're just going to keep running heaven while we, while we mess with this. Thing, okay? So Live the, demos, everybody. Li just, anything just could happen. <laughs> anything could happen. Okay, so uh, on Precision, you've got these two big yellow buttons, and that is your menu system. So I'm going to click right, and right away you'll see we've come to a brand new page. Yeah. Now, um, the blue here is showing your specific voltage frequency curve for the part that we're looking at right now. Okay. Now, the, this should effectively be the same for every part, but the fact is it's red from the silicon that's on your, okay. on your chip. The green represents the uh, overclock that you've currently got. So, so that's our plus 122. That is our plus 122. And we're in what's called basic mode right, right. now, which effectively says there's a, a fixed relationship, a fixed offset applied across the whole VF curve. Now you can interface with this thing by just clicking on it. And you can see I can raise and lower my entire VF curve by just kind of moving around. So I'm going to say, OK, 100, that's 200 megahertz. And then I hit apply. And right away, I'm now at 2050 or 2025. And I've, I've upped my overclocking just by yeah. clicking on the little uh, basic curve. Mm. OK, so that's, I think I'm going to, I think I'm all going in. Nope, I'm back. Hold on. He is OK. Too high. Uh, just a shade too high. Let's go a little bit lower and apply that. OK, I'm going to pull up precision, uh, heaven again. All right, so we're back. Heaven is relaunching. Now, if you go if you go back to the last thing, yeah, you had, you haven't did you adjust your your power targets? I oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah, here, sorry, yeah. right there. So I did push my power okay. target up right. to one twenty. Yep. Yeah. So let's go back to the overclocking. So we're back running again. Go back to your basic. And we'll go again. back to basic. There you and there's our curve. And so now we're running at around nineteen eighty seven. It seems like it's pretty yep. happy right there. So let's in twenty twenty five. Pretty cool. So what's happening in real time is we're moving up and down this curve that we've created. Right. Now, that's only one mode. Um, as I mentioned, you can now get more sophisticated. So linear mode allows you to have one point at the bottom, let's call it here, and you can have a higher point at the top. So what's happening is it's creating a VF curve that, again, represented by this green dot. Right. And you can see the amount of overclock is increasing as you go up. Now, a lot of people would... Uh, that seems like the wrong way to do it, perhaps. That seems backwards, right? So <laughs> what you might do is low at the top and high at the bottom. Right. And this recovery, let's go ahead and apply that. Okay. Okay. And now uh, now we're running at 1987. And, you know, we're again moving up and down the curve. Did it apply? Yeah, there you go. Okay. 1911, 1949. So I'm going to crank it up a little bit more and move this guy up a little bit and apply it again. Oh, I don't man. know. Is that, that's pretty aggressive. That's pretty high. What's that right there? That's a little high. We're going to go down a little bit. <laughs> oh, all, right. all right, here we go. Apply. See how we do. 1949, 1974. Okay, it's, it's still safe. But, you know, the truth is you might not want to fart around with these uh, VF curves, right? I don't. Do you not? I want somebody to do it for you me. You want somebody to do me for us. So what we've also <laughs> built into GPU Boost 3 is the ability to have a scanner. Okay, so what I'm going to do is close um, heaven over here. All right. And I'm going to kill that whole thing. I think I can just hit enter. Is that right? escape. Escape. Okay. Okay. So back over here. Now in manual mode, you can obviously click around on the grid. Now let's just click one here. And you're actually entering your own VF curve. It's kind of cool. You can actually go below the blue, which you I can. Kind of you can yeah. actually kind of create your own curve. Yeah. And EVJ has done a tremendous amount of work just to get this UI working. Of course, it's using a brand new collection of APIs that NVIDIA developed for Pascal um, that's allowing per voltage point frequency offset. It also uses a new API to lock 
the voltage point that you're running at. Now, by locking the voltage point that you're running at, you can actually test automatically how much offset. Oh, so you're basically telling the GPU, hey, I want to clock up. Don't automatically increase voltage right. like you normally would. Right, lock at voltage, right? I see. And okay. the reason you lock at voltage is so that you can test it. So let me show you what this looks like. I'm going right. to hit run. Now, remember, this is live overclocking. <laughs> we, and, and now we're scanning, OK? Oh, so I should have checked and seen how fast we're running. OK, so what it's going to do, I think, one, is it running quick or slow? I think, it's, I think I'm going to speed that up. Yeah, I think hit, hit cancel okay, on cancel it. This. Let's check our settings real and fast, settings just for the, down here. the purpose of demo. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to change that to two just to speed it up. So this is the configuration for how do I want to scan. What the scanner is going to do is start at the bottom of your voltage frequency curve. Yep. It's going to run a test. In this case, it's running sort of the, the Fermark donut. And then it's going to test between 100 and 200 megahertz and for two seconds. And it's going to run a <laughs> series of tests. Of course, in real life, you would do this longer. And uh, it'll create your voltage frequency curve for you. So here we go. We're going to run. Now, uh, Ken, can you? Sh I'm sorry, not Ken. Alan, can you show? Uh, <laughs> apologize. Uh, 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 sorry. Sorry. <laughs> can you? <laughs> hey, I'm sure Ken's watching. They love you, brother. So can you uh, show? And there you go. So we got the EVJ thing running. So you see, it's it's basically every two. It's running a test, looking for either visual corruption or the driver to crash, mm -hmm. right? And it runs it for two seconds. Ideally, you want to do this longer so you have a more stable system. You're yep. getting an accurate thing. Uh, but for our purposes, we're just kind of speeding things along. If yep. you switch to the other screen, yeah, you just did there. You can see the green bars. The little green bars. It will go up every, yeah, there it goes. It goes up about every two seconds. It'll right? go up. And then when it gets to a point where, hey, I think we're at a spot where we should stop, it moves on to the next one. Now, exactly. how do, you can adjust how aggressive it is yes. in those aspects? Yeah, the idea is it's doing uh, comparisons in memory looking for corruption because it knows kind of the pattern. That you the have a reference of have. what it should look yeah, like. This is what it should like when I'm all done. So if it's not looking like that right this second, you can capture per pixel errors, right? Okay. And of course, you could TDR and you can even hang up the system. And what Precision is doing and what with our help is recovering from TDRs quickly right. and uh, relaunching. It gives you a little pop-up. Do you want to automatically continue? But what's happening is we're stepping up the voltage curve. If you just look here, See, it's kind of going up slowly. Yeah. And the frequencies are getting frequency, higher. Frequency, yeah, is, it's going up. And then it comes back down frequency. as it goes, goes down to the, the frequency next point, right? stable. And, yeah. So you can imagine running this overnight, running it very exhaustively, and you'll get effectively a custom voltage frequency curve for your part. Right. And then when you're all done, uh, I'm just going to cancel this now. Uh, when you're all done, you just click apply, and then all of a sudden you're running at that new scan frequency. Okay. Okay, so that is precision in a nutshell, and it's a GPU Boost 3 in a nutshell. Over here is your over-voltaging. We've actually made that easier to use. It now goes between 0 and 100%. Again, one of the NVIDIA things is we don't recommend people over-voltage beyond a certain amount, and there's a little pop-up that, uh, that'll come. But if people want to, you know, it's, it's gamers. We do crazy stuff. Um, so at the end of the day, over-voltaging is, is um, going to be a warning, but everything else is going to be safe as it can be. You can't hurt your GPU. So how high have you taken some of these cards that you've played around with? Uh, the highest I have seen it is around 2.2 gigahertz or so. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm assuming that these are, you know, we're just getting started. I'm assuming that there's going to be uh, distribution. Right. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, each GPU is going to be different. So, you know, buyer, you know, is going to see some variation. But so far, it's ridiculously and shamefully fast. Shamefully fast? Shamefully fast. Yeah. Uh, and what about on the memory side? What would you... On I the mean, memory side, let's do... Well, I mean, the memory is obviously right here. Um, you, can, you can adjust it. I've seen easily 200 megahertz applied on a memory offset. So let me, uh, let me go ahead and reset this. I think that should be... I mean, just hit it. That's me, probably fine. Let's do this. I'm going to do a clock offset down to about 109. Well, maybe 200. What the heck? 184, apply it. And then here we're going to come back to... Uh, you know, we should have tested this ahead of time. Right? <laughs> yeah, so... Here's our memory cloud. I always say that. 5.2 gigahertz. Oh, 800. That's loading, That's loading up. Okay. That's loading up. You're all <laughs> right. It didn't, <laughs> it didn't crash yet. 5.2 gigahertz, bajillion hertz. Um, so obviously, our, our throughput is double that. So it's like 10.4 gigabits per second right now running. And we're running at 2.25 megahertz. 2.025. I'm sorry, 2.025. Right. Yes, yeah. 2.025 and 5.2. That's pretty good. Yeah, right for literally here. clicking four buttons. For clicking four right, buttons, and now it. you're kind of running heaven at, at crazy frames, 145 frames per second. And of course, the temperature right now is 66C, and it's net, you know, it's slowly it'll creeping go up, up, but it'll you can kind of see it plateau. It'll plateau around 85, and then the fan is basically off right now, and it'll start ramping slowly. Right, right. So do you expect people to have... When you go to a new process tech, you don't, like, we're kind of all just kind of 
figuring the stuff out. Yeah. But you, if you guys were kind of felt safe showing 2.2 on air at your editor's day or mm. during the live stream or whatever yeah. it was, what do you, I mean, have people started getting into the water cooling side of things? What are they kind of seeing at it? I haven't seen uh, any results yet with water cooling, but I'm sure as, as we get closer and closer to retail availability, yeah. you're going to see all kinds of crazy stuff start happening with liquid nitrogen. And I would be, you know, I hope that the world records get crushed. I would expect them to be crushed. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, what I, I know. I was going to go, our overclocking, I think Did I, you st try? I stopped How'd at you get? 2, 2025 is where uh, the GPU clock kind of, Leveled uh, out, okay. right? So this is just a little bit below. Okay, so it's uh, where we set it at, and yeah. I think on memory I got up to like three fifty. Right, well, let's let's do it. I, mean, I don't. Here, I mean, you don't really. No, we're here. Let's let's go. <laughs> let's do it, baby. So we do have to use the systems. Two hundred. Oh, didn't that already barf at two hundred? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, no, let's let's uh, two hundred. Hit apply. Oh. If you're gonna do it, yeah, at least do actually it. Do, do it. it. Right? I mean, eighteen seven, nineteen forty nine. Mm. All right. All right. Two thousand. What, what, what was that? Ah. All right, close. All right, yeah, close. All right, I think we're done on this. Um, so I mean, and th that's that's pretty cool. And the idea of a uh, a curve, like a per voltage curve, yeah, is the idea. I don't know. Like you said, we have you haven't seen enough to see what the what the range is. How close do you think that software will be able to get to getting the maximum you'd be able to get at your GPU if you did it manually? I think it's going to get very close. You think so? Yeah, I mean, because there's, um, it, it, it's really just how long do you want to test it and how, how um, let me see if I can get this back up. How long do you want to test it and what test do you run? I, I right. believe EVJ has the ability to effectively, uh, let me see if I have to reset this thing. Uh, ooh, save that. Hold on one sec. Yeah. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to so get pull this back up. up. While you're fixing that, Tom, is there a, a way to like run that automatic calibration thing and then back it off by X percent or something. Yeah, well, um, we're adding that right now because uh, the idea was you want an aggression factor, so 100% right, right. or 90% or whatever to back off the curve that's calculated so you're stable out of the box, right? Right. Yeah. So that's coming. And I, I suspect you're going to see by the time of availability, um, you know, that kind of feature. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.